All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Blackberry Central podcast. Today, I'm your host, Scott, and with me, we've got actually a pretty big crew. So on uh, over here, we've got Dylan, who has been away for a little bit, uh, Khaled, or CE of Blackberry Central, Duvall, who hasn't been back probably since the first podcast when he had microphone issues, and then, of course, Shivan, over actually way over in India with Duvall. So today's lineup is... Uh, Basically, we're going to first we're going to kick off with a priv uh, Q and A. So both the, uh, Dylan and Cal have privs right now, and the three of us are just going to fire some questions at them, see how they like it, and uh, so that we can show what the viewers what the difference is between BlackBerry Ten and Priv, and maybe some issues that they might uh, jump up at. So the first thing I want to know is how much are you guys missing Blend? Because Blend is not available for the for the priv right now. So, uh, Dylan, why don't you kick off and let us know how much you're missing Blend and your thoughts on the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Blend is a big part of what you do with BlackBerry 10, I think. As well, since it came out and, and, and not having that productivity available at your fingertips now is, is, is super annoying. Um, I hate picking up my phone throughout the day just to check a quick email. I'd rather be doing it on the computer where I'm not, you know, one thing to another. Um, but I don't know about Khalid. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. When I'm at work, I got my laptop in front of me. I don't want to have to take out my phone. A lot of times I'd even use uh, Blend to check emails. Even though I'm on a computer, I can easily check an email. It's just easier to have it there in the corner or on a, the secondary screen and just have the email up with all my notifications there. It sucks without it, seriously. Uh, so do you guys find... Do you guys find that uh, it's more about uh, email or for me personally, when I use blend, it's mostly my instant messaging. So either text messages or mainly uh, BBMing. So, but you guys find it's more on the email that you're locking it? Yeah, a bit of both. I'd say email and BBM are the heaviest. Yeah. Right on. Uh, I'm going to pass over to Shavin. You got any questions about the proof, Shavin? Uh, not really. I mean, I've seen that uh, it is quite difficult to customize the notifications. It's not as easy as it is in BlackBerry 10. Mm -hmm. So how inconvenient is it for you? Yeah. It's, um, I know with, uh, with Jessica Litt or me. <laughs> I'm sure either of us, you go ahead Dylan. I was gonna say the one thing I really miss is one pro, like I, I don't usually keep any profile settings aside from phone calls only. It's like the only thing I want to make sure I, I keep track of is making sure that I answer those phone calls. And, and I don't have that now. It's either priority, uh, normal, vibrate, or completely off. And like, like that, that's kind of a piss off in a few ways because it, it's super handy for me and not being able to change things up as easily as BlackBerry 10 really, really sucks. I haven't tried, but I'm sure there's an Android app or something that we can download to make profiles, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But you're right. It's straight from the actual OS, there's no way. It's not. It's not easy. And uh, there have been quite many reviews out there stating that uh, the UI or the user interface has been quite buggy. You know, BlackBerry has come up with their own uh, set of notification filtering, and uh, it doesn't many many of the time it doesn't recognize the correct applications. So, how true is that? I don't I don't really have any issues myself um, the one thing that kind of annoys me about the hub is I'll check a notification and the star in the top left corner to show that there's a notification will stay there until I get out of the hub and get back in but it's not like a notification is at the top of the screen or anything so I don't know I, I've heard a lot of issues but I per, myself I haven't experienced much in terms of bugginess, I think every single priv owner out of the box, the device has to like, you know what I mean? It has to adjust. The OS has to settle in. And at first, maybe your first few days, the, yeah, there's a lot of um, more visual glitches than, than I'd say. Anything. Yeah. But it, it definitely settles in within a week. And then after that point, everything's nice and smooth for the most part. Before we move on, Dylan, I want to ask you, right when I took this thing out of the box, this side here, it squeaks. Does yours squeak? Yeah, but mine's on the, the volume button side. 
Is it? Yep. It's it's hard. Um, I mean, you have in, in the Canadian market, you have a basically a thousand dollar phone. Uh, you know, taxes in, and, and to be able to to push on the back and touch the battery and feel that there's like a, a gap there. It's it's disappointing that, and I mean, it's a slider, but at the same time, a, a thin piece of foam would have been absolutely yeah, just behind the battery there. So. Yeah, I had a, I convinced one of my friends to pick one up. He was so excited to get a pair. Found out hey, it's a slider. It's got a keyboard. It's got the curved screens. He's like, "What more can you ask for in a phone?" The day he got it, he, excuse me, he texted me and he's like, "Dude." Uh, is it just my phone or is it every priv, like the side squeaking? I'm like, no, it's every priv. You just got to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. $1,000 phone and a 10 cent piece of phone or $1,000 phone and a 10 cent piece of phone would have been uh, gone a long way there. Uh, Duvall, you get any questions for the guys with their privs and their experience there? I got one more. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so... Also, there are many disappointments out there regarding the two megapixel front camera that they've put there. So, how annoying or how inconvenient is it for you? I mean, is it really that bad? <laughs> I, w I wouldn't say it's a terrible camera. Obviously, it's due to how thin they make the phone. But I never use my front-facing camera. Like, I I'll use the rear, and it's got an awesome rear one. So, that's all I care about. I don't know if Khalid uses his front one at all, but I'm not... <laughs> yeah i don't i don't use it much but i know that people do use it like especially these days people use the front a lot but something had to be given up like with how thin the screen is after it's slid up you can't fit anything bigger than that in in the phone so i understand and people just need to understand that that's it is what it is you want a phone that thin then it's a two megapixel camera it's better than a two megapixel camera than uh, them compromising the back camera. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, uh, Dylan hit it there that uh, it's because it's so thin. And that actually came up with Blackberry's AMA on Reddit Reddit the other day. Someone actually asked clearly and he was like, you know, what's the deal with the two megapixel front facing camera? And it was nice to actually see him give a, a, a no BS answer in that. You know, it's just because of space requirements. Anything bigger would have took up more space and then the phone wouldn't have been as thin as what they wanted it to be. So it was pretty nice. But uh, I'm going to hand over to Val now and see what, what he wants to know about the curve from you guys. Yeah, so this uh, front-facing camera, is that uh, the biggest sacrifice you think that BlackBerry made in terms of hardware or software? Or it's not the only one? Hmm. That's a good question. I wouldn't say it's the, like, it having an 808 instead of an 810, I think is also something that's, it bugs me a little. So you think they could have gone with 810? And yeah, just for heating issues. Probably like use... Five years overheats. You're right. Is it overheat? Yeah. Not overheat, but it heats up. It gets It gets warm in the corner, but... Not enough for me to set the thing down and be like, well, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. No, no, for sure. Um, my, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. Processor, uh, front-facing camera, none of that stuff really bugs me. Um, I think it's the overall feel of it. Um, you know, like the side screen thing. It's just things like the two screens in, in for introduction just isn't up to the standards that it really should be when you're producing this. Like if you're gonna do a do or die phone, at least have, you know what I mean? It's just like one extra person on that line that could go, yeah, we need a piece of foam. In this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, that's, that's what bugs me. It's not the processor or the camera. I think I'm happy otherwise it's just the overall feeling of the plastic. Okay, so Dylan, uh, do you think that uh, they have compromised the overall quality of the priv because of that back? I could, I could see it. I could see someone going into a store, uh, say they go into Rogers, they spend like $950 on a phone. They walk in, they go home, 
and then they're kind of feeling it. The screen's clicking a little bit, the back's moving. I could see someone returning it and going, I think I need a different unit because this one seems defective. Then they get another one and it's got the same bull crap. Like I could see that becoming an issue in terms of how many they sell and how many they retain <laughs> in terms of people keeping the devices after purchase. Yeah. Is it just related to one batch or that's across the board? You know, initially we had, we had you know, Z10s that restarted, but that was later found out to be a software glitch and some release resolved that, but then is it something to, to do with the batch, manufacturing batch? Or? It's, it's hard to see if the initial batch was bad or like you know, they didn't step it up enough, but I haven't heard of many devices not having those issues. The screen clicking or, you know, to the point where, where fan sites are actually making articles on, oh yeah, you know, slide it out and then you have to bend it down a little bit to get the screen to stop clacking as much. And it's like, that's, that's one, that's dangerous. <laughs> and two, that's, it's a name to think that we have to create articles uh, for a mass awareness that that's an issue with the device. How, do you, how are you guys uh, finding the Android version of the hub there? You know, it's, it's definitely my, my top feature of BlackBerry 10, which is not sold on the whole Android version yet. But what's your guys' uh, thoughts on it? Lynn and I talked about this the other day. I, I don't use the Android Hub like maybe twice a week, if that. It's it's honestly, it's awful on Android. Um, handy if you want to see everything at once, um, but that's about it. I don't think replying from there is very responsive unless it's an email. Everything else opens like third party wise, unless it's BBM or your actual email. And then we also talked about the inability to save images within the hub. Like I'll get an email and someone's sending some kind of presentation thing and I go to save that image. So that way I have it and I can share it. And I can't save images from the hub. Um, I've, dug, I've went through the settings. I can't find anything that says, here's how you enable saving photos from the hub. And so- That's, that's odd. Saving attachments in general is a pretty core piece of, you know, Thing you need to be able to do so what's your thoughts Cal? if it comes as like an attachment it works you can save it but if it's if the image is embedded in the email you, there's nothing you can do no yeah but i use the hub i can't say i can't say i'm like dylan i use it all the time i appreciate it i appreciate the effort um, but it's definitely not as good as it. It's just going to take time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I will say one thing that I really like. Well, aside from the gesture that they, they ended up sort of integrating is I, I really like the, the ability to sort of swipe across and delete or swipe the other way and you can snooze. So if I get an email and I'm like, you know what? It's, it's nine o'clock at night. I'm not going to reply to that email, but I'll hit snooze. So that way at six tomorrow, They'll pop back up and say, "Here's that email." I really okay, like cool. And we don't have that in BlackBerry 10, which is really cool. Yeah, that's actually it would be a pretty neat feature to have uh, in the OS for sure. Another thing that we don't and have. You could ignore that email, right? But then, you know, with with the hub, you know, it's always accessible. You could just read it or keep it aside and read it tomorrow morning. Yeah, it's a good feature for sure. It is. I It bothered me at first, though, because I'd want to get out of the hub, just like we do on BlackBerry 10, and I'd swipe a co one of the conversations and uh, end up deleting it and then not knowing which one I deleted. So I turned on the feature to confirm if I want to delete something. But uh, another thing we don't have on BlackBerry 10, which is really good on Android Hub, is you can choose profiles pretty much so for me on blackberry 10 i had in the hub just i got rid of email and social media i just had bbm text and whatsapp because that's what i use the most then if i wanted to get into any emails i'd have to go specifically into the email folder now on android you can have it where you have multiple different i guess groups uh so i have one i guess profile that's 
text messages and BBM and hopefully WhatsApp's coming soon. I have one profile that's Facebook, Twitter, and another one that's strictly email, which is useful. Because I have three different email accounts and all of them can show up in one profile. For uh, Shavim or Deval, you guys have any more uh, questions or even Dylan or Cal, if you want to make any more, any more uh, points, but Prev, feel free to go ahead and do so. Um, I took some pictures with the Priv. I took the same picture without flash on the Priv and compared it to um, the iPhone 6S and Xperia Z5 Premium and a Note 5. The Xperia destroyed everything. <laughs> that thing's got a 23 megapixel camera, I think. Um, the Note 5 was better than the Priv. And that's setting 16 megapixel? Yeah, yeah, 16 megapixel. Just the lighting. The lighting, excuse me. Um, yeah, but the iPhone was horrible. Without flash, it was horrible. Yeah. Hmm. Really? That, that's surprising. Yeah. yeah. I thought iPhones had better cameras than anything out there. Is it more yeah. Or optics or a supposed to have. Yeah. Are you doing any uh, points you want to make? I don't know. Um, it's definitely a, a wow phone when you're on public. It's definitely not something that goes unmissed. I know I was at a, a pub one night, and um, I got I pulled up my phone, and and um, my friend beside me said that the guys at the table next to us were all kind of like, you know, looking over it and, and they're kind of oogling it. They had like, a, I think a Z30 and a Q10 between them. And then, so it, it's among Blackberry people, I think it's, it's like, wow, that, that's a cool phone. Even so, not among Blackberry people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, you've had your, your share of experiences too, I think, Khalid, in, uh, yep. in public, right? I've had, even at work, like someone will come to work, like a customer or something, and they'll uh brings a bunch of bearings like he's an old guy old farmer bring a bunch of bearings put them on the table and want us to figure out what bearings he's got and even the guy that's 60 65 looked at it and he's like oh that's the priv <laughs> wow which was that's very not, surprising that's not really the blackberry uh target market a 65 year old <laughs> farmer but uh it's still pretty impressive awesome you know hey, guys, he's a professional right yeah. He's a professional, so if if BlackBerry is trying to target professionals, age doesn't matter. That's true. That's true. You know, uh, that's that's awesome. I think that's a pretty good Q and A. How we move on to uh, our next topic that we want to hit on, and that that's uh, the exact platform we're sitting on, which is about to disappear: BBM meetings and BlackBerry's decision to uh, to kill it. So, uh, well, Shavim, you're nodding your head there right away. So, what do you think's going on? What's your thoughts on it? Let me start us off. Okay. Uh, I think I, it's a great service. Uh, the way BlackBerry launched it was really good. We went directly cross-platform, launched all the apps at once. So it was very convenient. I don't know why they're doing this. I mean, right now I can you know, easily connect to my phone or my laptop. It's all up to me. And the pricing also seemed pretty competitive. But... I think I, lack of marketing is what uh, made the service a failure. I mean, nobody even knows that BBM meetings exist. Yeah, marketing is always an issue with BlackBerry. Uh, and meetings has been obviously no different. Uh, Kaladin, any thoughts there on this? Uh, yeah, same thing. Like, I, it's all marketing, man. They have so many good things. BlackBerry comes out with so many excellent products and they just don't market it so no one knows about it. And now BBM meetings, like, I haven't met a single person that knows about it. I don't know anyone that's ever used it. Yeah. We use it for these, uh, for these podcasts, but, I mean, has anyone used it outside of these podcasts? Well, I mean, aside from... I would love to, but, yeah, it, it's expect time that they cannot market properly is even in Canada. Forget about India and the rest of the world, but in Canada, they cannot market 
BBM meetings and you know even the, their other product offerings for enterprise and that kind of, that that's a bummer. It, it, it's kind of like BlackBerry helped that the pure fact that BBM was in the title of the product that it would help carry it along because there is very few ties actually to BBM app. If you think about it, like you can start a meeting within BBM, but that's about it. And I'm sure that BlackBerry could code that for any app in the world if they really wanted to. So it's kind of like they just decide, okay, we'll put BBM in the, in the title of the product and hope that carries it, it the way forward. But it didn't seem. Dylan, what's your thoughts? Um, I know in our, on, on the site post on BlackBerry Central there, we talked about how it's, it's disappointing for us internally because it's something we use not just for podcasts, but, but we do use it a little bit when it comes to like internal meetings and stuff like that. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's others that do it as well. And then there's gotta be some companies out there that have some use for it. Um, I know when Duvall and I sat down with uh, the CEO of GSX uh, and we did our interview with him, I think he thought that, that like there's some use there. He already had the app and like, I mean, there was, there's definitely some application for him having a company in Geneva but also working with a, a multitude of different countries and having employees situated in the United States, for example, um, there could be use there, but obviously it comes down to, like we talked about before the podcast, the allocation of those resources in continuous development, marketing, and really getting it out there. And as far as I know, this is basically a repackaged Zoom. Um, how would we change gears a little bit and talk about something a little bit more exciting maybe? We'll see, hopefully, and uh, the leaks uh, and, uh, you know, thoughts about uh, Vienna, which has been kicking around a little bit. Anyone lining up for it, or what do you guys think? That's what that's the initial thoughts, or the initial takes are. Dylan? It's, uh, I don't know, it's, um, it's an interesting device. Um, obviously, a priv um, and a silver edition and, and a leap got together and, and made a baby and, and we have the Vienna and that's, that's a device that's coming out to the best of my knowledge. There's no, there's no canceling that yet. Um, but it's not a device that I'm going to go out and pick up just for the sake of having it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay comfy with the print. Um, the the one I think the two people I'd like to hear from would be would be Shivam and Duval just because it's going yeah. to be a lower end Android cost so I mean, it's not going to be you know the, the thousands and thousands of rupees it's going to be a little bit easier I think on the wallet. What do you guys thought? I, I I don't like the form factor and then if if I had a choice to make I would rather go with the Priv rather than the Vienna. Uh, price is not a problem but then. As far as looks and differentiation goes, uh, Priv is more of an exclusive than the Vienna, at least as, as things stand today. Mm -hmm. Um Actually, just to see what the reaction is, I did show this to a couple of friends of mine over here. And to be honest, they loved it. I mean... You won't believe, but uh, Indian companies over here are actually trying to clone the same kind of device so that it sells. I mean, I can give an example. That there's a Spice Stella 360 available in the Indian market. It is a touchscreen Android with a QWERTY keyboard. And it's sold a lot. And if, BlackBerry offer, and if BlackBerry can offer the same product, then BlackBerry as a brand is still pretty good in India. So it should sell. Yeah, I think it's a great move by BlackBerry. Because Priv, the only thing that's stopping, well, not the only thing, but a major thing for a lot of people not buying the Priv is the price. And if you're going to go to Android, there's so many Android devices that are, that are low end that, are, that people are buying, but none of them have a decent keyboard or a physical keyboard at all. So they're going into a market that no, not too many companies are touching on. What about you, Scott? What do you think? Um, yeah, it's not for me. I personally find that the, you know, just the mock-up of the device is just too tall for my liking. 
Um, I'm starting, I've been a year with the Passport now, ish. I'm starting to push for that full touch experience again, you know, the 16 by nine form factor and so on. So maybe if anything, I'll go over and grab a pair eventually one day. Uh, or we'll see what if the Blackberry eventually comes out with the, another Z30 successor type. Whether. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to, uh, Actually, probably Shavim and uh, Deval can, you know, touch a lot in on this next topic, and that's a BlackBerry pulling out of Pakistan and saying, "No, you're not getting access to our servers." You know, you guys are in that part of the world. So, what's your thoughts and what's being talked about over in India on this whole topic? I think that's a great move, um, personally, or you know, e even as a company, if you're marketing yourselves as uh, an enterprise software company, you know, that deals in security of products and privacy of products. It, it's a great move uh, from a company standpoint. You know, if, if somebody's asking BlackBerry to put in back doors for the software or so, something along those lines, if if I was John Chen, I would deny that. And what they did with India was they put in a server here in Mumbai. I, I think it's in Mumbai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's just l lawful interception. So you get a warrant from a judge that you know you want to mark up this guy, or spot this guy, and see his or her BBMs. You do that with the warrant, but it's not just anybody; it's just some specific individuals that they can target with that. With yes, the difference is I that, that access here. Yeah, the difference is that. Uh, you know, BBM was quite uh, a lot in the news for, you know, the government was asking for the encryption keys. So what BlackBerry did was that, just like Daval said, they just set up a server over here and you need to go through the legal way of getting information on a particular user. The government doesn't have full access to these servers. You need a warrant for it. And it's not as if you can just get into a, the system and read all the messages. It's all controlled. So as a company, as a brand, it's really good move. I mean, they're sticking up to what they stand for. That is privacy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be much. That's pretty well how it is here in Canada as well. You know, government just can't uh, tap into the lines, so to speak, and uh, start listening. They need a warrant. And BlackBerry pretty well said that, you know, it came out and said that, you know, they're willing to work with the government on lawful requirements for the information, but uh, they're not just going to really, really hand it over. But uh, for Cal and Dylan, what do you guys think on the business side of it, though? You know, they're, they're going to pull themselves right out of a, a pretty major market and uh, say adios. So, you know, could that have the impacts on the bottom line in the end? That's another thing to consider. Yeah, it's just, just to chip in, it's not a very big market, at least not as compared to uh, North America or Europe or even India. They had some four four thousand subscriptions there. Four yeah, five thousand. Uh, I don't know the source of this information, but uh, the Pakistani media was reporting that there are approximately four thousand to five thousand BES clients, which is a bit for sure. Um, but I mean, despite the dense population, unless your market is is thriving in terms of handset sales. Is it so much of a loss um, to pull out when you're making a point that could resonate over into, into North America and in, in their main sort of market that says we're, we're really this firm on our security and, and how we stand as a Canadian company? Um, it's, it's, do, you, do you wait as there's 4,000 loss or do you say there's, there's potentially thousands gained uh, in a different market? So that's a good point. Right. I agree. I think it was a good move. I mean, as long as they use it to their advantage and they, I don't know if you can market that or what you can do with that, but there's potential to gain so much more outside of Pakistan because they're not agreeing to give them all the permissions. Yeah, uh, for sure. I think, it's a, you know, and if you actually look at the, the stock like I do, you can see when the blog post came up, there was a huge spike in the stock price. So it actually shows investors, 
agreed with the company's decision on what they did. So that was a nice sign. But there's still one question that leaves the ask, and that's, you know, it specifically talks about Bez and Bez clients and Bez servers and so on. But how about the guys like you and me who aren't on Bez that have BlackBerry devices? You know, does, are they basically saying that the government can get access to those? that information? That's kind of a gray area that kind of got left out. What's your guys' thoughts there? The ball? They, they should have uh, a warrant, you know, some, something from a judge that says they want to intercept my B BBMs or whatever BlackBerry uh, services I use. Uh, but without that, they cannot. That is that is that is how it works. That that was what part of the yeah, difference. So. For sure, you know, the uh, whole principle behind it is that they should have a warrant and so on, but I'm talking technically, could they go ahead and intercept them now? Because all that was discussed was Bez, you know, so are the individual users left out of the protection of the Bez? Uh, you know, are we at increased vulnerability? Is what I'm wondering. Another thing you question would be BBM protected. I believe one of the claims there was that not even BlackBerry can intercept and encrypt the messages that are sent between two BBM protected subscribers. And how that impacts it. Because it's, say, I, say I get a warrant and I say, okay, I need to look at Khalid's BBM messages. Um, but I go in and, and it turns out, you know, he's been using BBM protected. Do I have any access at all? Or does that completely make the whole idea of it completely null? Uh, that I think that's another question to ask too. That the, there are extra layers of encryption that they that are offered to consumers. So. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. Anyway, uh, there, I think there's still a lot more to be to come on this whole topic. There's still um, more questions and answers, but it's definitely uh, I think BlackBerry's done the right move personally, and it is both the individual as the shareholder. The shareholders obviously agreed with them on on the stock for, uh, spike, but kind of went back down to normal reality afterwards, slowly, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, see, they do have until the 30th of December, 30, 31st of December, uh, to stay in Pakistan. Maybe they can go ahead and uh, work a deal with the government. Hopefully the Pakistan government will see, uh, see the way we see it. But, uh, you know, there's a good chance that they might not. Uh, let's carry on with... Uh, you know, talk about stock and so on, uh, probably our, one of our last topics, and that's going to be the upcoming earnings call on the 18th of December. And uh, any of you guys, what are you expecting? Anything, do you think that uh, there will be any uh, um, interesting things that will come out, or will this just be a status quo as of late earnings call, or slash, as I like to sometimes refer to as losses call? Uh, thoughts there? Uh, let's start you off, Khaled. What do you think? It's this upcoming call. I, I'm just curious about Perv sales. They, they'll, they'll announce that in, on this earnings call, right? Uh, actually, they don't generally announce specific device sales. Well, not specific uh, device, but... They, they, will announce, uh, um, they will announce sales. The one thing that we'll see that you can only hope for is whether or not they break it down by operating system type which you could actually, you know, to do sets only to priv because that's all they got for on the Android. So if they go BBOS sales were X number of thousands of units, BlackBerry 10 sales were X number or Y number of thousand units and BlackBerry Android devices were y, Z number of device yeah. units sold, then that's the only way you can uh, bring it out. Actually, someone was poking around, I was talking to saying that uh, there's only been 10,000 downloads on the Play Store and trying to say, oh, there's only been 10,000 priv units sold. I kind of don't buy that, uh, but because I don't think the play counts a download as an upgrade. So all the privs get sold with all the BlackBerry services and apps already yeah. installed on them and they're just going to update. So I don't think that's a good metric way to count the number of device sales. I'd be quite surprised if, if it's low, low as 10,000. Yeah, we're um, we're talking. I think when we look at those those numbers, we're looking at um, updates after afterwards. Because I know before the priv really launched, you'd see like something like a thousand downloads, or just under that, um, and and that's due to the updates that they were doing internally before the device launched. 
So afterwards, because you say you, say you have uh, 10,000 base devices, those all come pre-installed. It doesn't really have anything to do with the Google Play count unless it becomes an afterthought or, oh, I need to upgrade my camera app. And then there's one more download, one more download, one more download. I think the 10,000 would just be a generic number, probably not exactly the most accurate number to represent how many people have actually updated those apps. Um, I know tomorrow, I think, is when the update rolls out for, for non-shop BlackBerry Priv devices. Um, and that's also when they're going to start rolling out. I believe it's between this Monday and this Friday, this upcoming Friday, that we see the apps begin to update too. So I'm sure we'll see a massive increase there in terms of how many people are updating those apps. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think it's a fair representation of how many devices are out there. What's your, what's your thought on the uh, upcoming earnings call, Dylan? Where, where do you think this will be going? What, what should we expect? I'm thinking the improved sales is going to be the biggest watcher. I think even like from a stock perspective, a lot of people are going to be paying attention to the, to the, the handset segment of BlackBerry. Software is cool. And you know what I mean? There's increases there. But I think the handsets are what they're really looking at. Um, I mean, for generically. Um, I don't see more than more than a million privs out there. I could see between four and 500,000 in, in sort of their first month, first month and a half type deal. Uh, but I can't see it exceeding that point, just, just at a, on a device cost perspective. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't deny that either. I don't expect a huge number of proof sales. And uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be on the hard rail. But I kind of feel like it's not fair to uh, judge BlackBerry on the proof sales just yet. I think they need one more quarter before you can actually go ahead and say whether or not it's successful or it hasn't been or it's just been mediocre. Uh, I, I, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable making a deduction on, on the hardware sales just yet without another quarter because it hasn't been out for a full quarter yet. And that's really what you want to see. Uh, Shavim, what's your thoughts on the upcoming uh, earnings call there on the 18th? Any, any thoughts? I think uh, they should be positive this time. And uh, I've got that feeling because, you know, Prive has been a completely different device, not just because of Android, but the way BlackBerry has been showing it to the people. Earlier, BlackBerry did zero marketing. But uh, with the Priv, you know, they went to Good Morning America. They are hosting, presenting conferences in Miami. And there's quite a lot of marketing. People know that BlackBerry has a device named Priv. It's not like Passport or Classic. So when the overall brand relevance goes up, I think sales should go up too. Uh, Deval, thoughts on the call? Yes. I'm with Dylan. I am guessing they have maybe about a million or so devices sold. If they give us a breakdown, breakdown of it, I don't think they would, but still, it would give us some idea how well the proof is selling. It also be, it's also that they, how many they were expecting to sell. That's, is what, that, that is what I want to know. You know if they are targeting, let's say, let, let's do a, a million proofs and we get a, get a you know, $100, $200 profit on those million then it's kind of good. But then my, my lookout would be on the software side of things and where they're going with that, uh, especially now that John Chan has diverted the company as a, from a hardware to a software one. And that is where the most profit would lie uh, for, for BlackBerry. Also, one thing to consider is that the Priv isn't even out all over the world. There's a lot of countries that are still waiting for it. So that's another reason that it's not fair to judge the priv sales on this quarter, at least. Yeah, especially the uh, EU, if uh, you follow them with their resident developer, Christian. Yeah, it's not available here. It's uh, here in India, it's not in the EU. If you look at that uh, Reddit AMA, they were asking when it would be. And I'm very surprised they did not launch it and launch it there so fast or so soon. 
it's they actually always it's always like that with india I mean, even with passport they launched it and in september end and it was launched in india in january um dilan i wanted to ask you do you ever use the what's this thing called product yeah product do you use it? yeah i um it's uh i wouldn't say i use it at an incredible amount but it's it's nice to oh i moved it <laughs> it's nice to be able to swipe out like i i go to the hub and then that way it's it's all in kind of one spot or the calendar is handy, but I, I think I don't use that as much as I, I use the, uh, the drop down, the calendar widget. Oh shit. Really? So you can add, you can just, so all I do is this is my main screen swipe over, hit the plus button. And now I'm adding a calendar event. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's so handy. I like the widgets. I don't, I don't mind that, but that's it for us here at blackberrycentral.com. Don't forget to check out our Twitter BBM channel and our Instagram for all the latest of BlackBerry Central. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you again in the next one. Bye, guys. See you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>